Susan Fleming is a co-producer, co-writer, and director of I Am the Magpie River. This will air on The Nature of Things on CBC and CBC Gem on Thursday, February 1st at 9 p.m. The Magpie River is the first Canadian river to have been designated with personhood. Now, we're going to chat about that today, but before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about Susan. She's an award-winning, independent Canadian documentary filmmaker. She's been producing and directing films for 30 years, more than 30 years now. Her award-winning documentaries and television series have been seen in over 140 countries on major networks around the world. Welcome, Susan. It's really nice to have this chat with you today. Thank you. Lovely to speak with you, too. Now, I'm really interested in this documentary. Uh, it, it truly is a feast for the eyes. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous photography, and, and it puts a, a, a spotlight on the fact that the Magpie River in northern Quebec has become Canada's first natural phenomenon to be granted legal personhood. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the Magpie River and and why it's, it's so important. Happily. Um, you know, the Magpie is just a spectacular river. It's um, over 300 kilometers long, or almost 300 kilometers long, and it cuts through this incredible landscape in northern Quebec. It starts at the headwaters of Quebec and Labrador and flows all the way down to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. And it moves through some of the most beautiful scenery in this country steep cliffs and waterfalls and you see lynx and osprey um it is really a spectacular place on this planet that few people have seen but some have a national geographic named it one of the top five paddling destinations in the world oh, wow. um, for the inu of that uh, of northern quebec whose territory the magpie flows through it's a tremendously important river um culturally ancestrally it's just um it was a real privilege to spend so much time on this river and in that landscape. Well, there's a lot of rock and, and the waters, they tumble down through these waterfalls. It's, it's really quite dramatic. And I'm wondering, what were the, the challenges of filming and recording in this environment? It was really difficult, as all nature films are, you know, one way or another. But this one was tough because it was so hard to get to. You had to fly in either by float plane or helicopter. Um, and the, you know, the tundra is just barren. And we were there um, in the winter and in the, in the spring. And in the winter, it's just, you know, huge winds. You could barely stand up. Uh, and in the summer, it's blazing hot, just rock. Uh, so, it, you know, as you move down the river into the forest, they're so thick. Uh, because there's no logging roads, there's no way through except down the river that it's very difficult to navigate. Um, and once you're on the river, it's class, you know, three, four, and five rapids. So it's very challenging to paddle. It's an extremely powerful river. You feel it. It's so, one of the things that really struck me was how loud it was. Like, I couldn't figure out why I was feeling that kind of rumble in my heart. And it was because of the power of this river, which is constant. It never lets up. And you feel it in your bones. And I can really see why for the Inu, this is such a powerful piece of their history and of their being, because you can't help but feel the magpie when you're near it. You know, the photography of both the wildlife and the geography is really outstanding. And it, and it gives you that sense of being there. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about your your key production people who were on this uh, shoot and, uh, and how long did it take? It took about two and a half years to make it. And thank you for asking that question because filmmaking and nature filmmaking in particular is such a team effort. Um, you know, we all have to pull together to be able to make a film like this. And I have to give kudos to my cameraman, Joshua C., who is one of the bravest people I know. He was always game for everything, literally to the point of being strapped into climbing harvest harnesses and walking out on steep, wet rocks, 100 feet above the river as it's raging below and the spring melt is happening and three guys holding on to him. 
when he's holding his camera trying to film the whole scene. Um, and he did multiple feats. He was just a such trooper, um, amazing guy. And we had an incredible guide, one who was holding um, Josh through many of these feats called Mathieu Bourdain, who's in the film and he's a river guide. And he just was incredible at getting us, you know, into this terrain and through it. And not just safely, but also making us incredible meals off the mushrooms and herbs he picked along the way. Uh, so we had just a phenomenal team of people who worked so hard. We spent months and months in this environment. And uh, we went back for all four seasons multiple times and paddled the river several times. And every time it was a new challenge and, and they all met it with such gusto. I'm, I'm really proud of everybody. Well, they did an amazing job. And it's obvious that there's a lot of people who are very passionate about the Magpie River. Maybe you could tell us about the, the different kinds of people that are are so concerned and, and so supportive of, of this initiative. That was one of the things that really drew me to the Magpie River was that the, the right of legal personhood for the Magpie River was the first joint effort between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples to gain legal personhood for, for a natural phenomenon in the world. And so it really puts Canada on the map. And it made it was so apparent when you talk to people. For the Innu, um, it's, you know, the rocks are ancestors. The river is critically important. Um, and we met with members of the Innu community called Ukunichit, which is at the base of the river, and the, the whole river runs through their territory to ask for their permission before we started the film, before we went on the land. And they were so kind to us and they taught us so much. I'm so grateful for their support and their permission. And that's like Chief Pietishu was just the most incredible man. Um, he's paddled the magpie, he knows the river intimately. Uh, he feels so strongly about how important it is and he's fought so hard to protect it as have so many people in his community. And then on the non-Indigenous side, Mathieu Bourdain, who I spoke of, he lives um, in a community just near the base of the Magpie. He paddles the river every year, has for over 20 years, knows it deeply, every, every crest and turn he knows. Um, and he's just been working for over 20 years with Jan Troutet, who's a, um, a scientist who's in the film. And the people's passion for this river is really remarkable. It, it really goes into people's hearts. And it was infectious. You couldn't help but feel their passion. You couldn't help but understand why, because it is just a beating heart of a river. And um, there's been so many people who've worked tirelessly for you know, 20, 30 years to make sure this river gets protected. And I'm so happy that their efforts paid off in this unique way. You know, it's interesting. The Magpie River, as I was watching the documentary, um, I, I had the same feeling about that as I had when I looked at the rugged cliffs of Newfoundland, the north of Superior, and, and the geography there. There are parts of Canada where the geography just grabs you and reminds you that the 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 earth itself is so important to all of us and oh. and it and it it's it's like a beacon to us it really it's, is and it's visceral you you just feel it in your bones and i think that's one of the things we have to be so proud of as canadians we can be so proud of as canadians but we also have to remember that it's a responsibility that we have these incredibly precious landscapes that we can't take for granted. Like the, you know, one of the things that's really become part of my um, awareness in making the film was just how important fresh water is in the world and how rich Canada is in fresh water supplies. And we really can't take that for granted because I think it's gonna be like coal and oil. Fresh water is gonna be the next thing that you know, wars are fought over, and we have got to protect what we still have because mm -hmm. um, it is a precious resource. And, um, you know, you think about Canada as 10% of the world's fresh water, that's incredible. When you look at the Magpie River, you realize that Hydro Quebec 
would love to harness the power of that river. Did Hydro-Quebec or any other group try to um, quash this initiative? No, actually no one did. And they were aware of what we were doing. I got permission from them before we went up to the Romaine River to film there. Um, and they made, you know, I took the time to make sure that I spoke to them. I understood their perspective. It's really critical as a documentary filmmaker to hear from everyone um, and to, to not be biased, but, um, or try not to be biased or humans, um, but they didn't. And it's interesting because I, we went up to the, the Romaine River with Chief Pietishu, who's a powerful man. Um, so I'm not sure if I was somewhat protected from, by him um, but we were never, no one ever said anything. And in fact, what's been interesting is outside of Hydro-Quebec, the amount of support we've had, like the CBC was incredible. Sue Dando at the CBC, who's the commissioning editor for The Nature of Things, was our guardian. I mean, she helped us, you know, get this film made. And I'm so grateful to her because it's a, it's a bit of a different kind of nature film. It's not about an animal with a cute face and fuzzy ears. It's very conceptual and um, it's a big idea legal personhood and so she was really instrumental in us being able to get the film made and it's when I explain legal personhood to people um, they're shocked it's just an idea of like what what is that legal personhood for a river uh, when you talk about how corporations have legal personhood charities have legal personhood ships have legal personhood so why not natural phenomena they start to kind of be able to wrap their heads around it. I think one of the central ideas that comes through very strongly is that personhood recognizes that nature has an inherent right to exist outside of what it can do for us. And there's a, there's a real purity in that concept. D did, you, did you feel this as you were producing the show? even before, this is what made me want to make the film. When I read about the Magpie River gaining legal personhood in the newspaper, I thought, that's a strange concept. I'm going to look into that. And the more I read, the more I was just absolutely fascinated and kept thinking, yeah, why not? This, is, this makes perfect sense. And when you explain it to young people, they really get it. They think, of course, rivers should have rights. Of course, forests should have rights. And once, they understand, once people understand that it's not about the right of being a person, but the idea that you have the right to be recognized as an entity, just like a corporation does. So it doesn't, you know, the Magpie River having legal personhood doesn't mean that it has the same rights as you or I, but it does mean that it has a voice in the courts if you try to damn it, if you try to pollute it. For the first time in Canada, an entity can say, hey, you know, we're going to present a case to say why this isn't a good idea. Doesn't mean they'll win, but the voice of the river is heard in the court. And of course it should be, you know, and it's through legal guardians that are appointed um, by the people who put the laws forward, the Indigenous and non-Indigenous people who fought for the river. And so it just allows this new perspective to come into being, which is a big paradigm shift, but a paradigm shift that's time has come. Mm -hmm. And so there was an article at the start of the new year in the Guardian International, and it said, is 2024 the time for rights of, of personhood? And I thought, yes, it's, you know, it's <laughs> catching on. You can just see it's happening around the world. And, you know, Canada is joined an elite set of countries like Bolivia, Ecuador, New Zealand, Australia, that has enacted the rights of legal personhood for nature. And I, you can see more cases are coming and coming everywhere around the globe. And it's exciting. It's, this is the start of something really exciting. Now, in the case of the Magpie River, who actually granted the personhood? So the personhood came through um, resolutions that were enacted by the um, Council of Four of Unuk. In, uh, Konishit, it's a hard word to say, but Konishit, which is the Inu community. And the um, indigenous rights have, um, have gained a lot of power through the UN in the last couple of years. And it's also, the res sister resolutions were passed at the same time through um, the county of 
Mingani, which is the area where the magpie runs through. And that, that county is the size of Ireland, like it's huge. Um, so it's a resolu sister resolutions on the local Quebec level for the for Mingani and through the um, the Inu of Ukunitshit. And the, so they have like the Quebec local resolution and then through the indigenous um, support, they have international support that is uh, got a lot of power and is really growing in power in the last few years. So it's um, it's really an incredible joining of forces. So who will monitor that the rights of the river are, are not being compromised? That will be monitored by guardians who are still being put, this is relatively new, still being put in place. They'll likely be local and non-Indigenous and members of the um, uh, Inu from Okonichit. So there'll be, you know, three or four guardians who is, it's their job to watch the river. And Chief Pietashu has said, you know, their eyes are on the river now. The world's eyes are on the river. Um, and they particularly have people set in place to really monitor what is happening. And it's wonderful because they're right on the ground right there. And this is their, um, you know, ancestral lands. They feel so deeply and passionately about them. Um, they're very on the ball. They're very, you know, in the game watching. Anyone who appreciates the importance of our natural environment will be uh, certainly encouraged by this program. It, 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 it's a beautiful piece of work. Uh, and have you had any expressions of interest or do you see this as a, a case in point for other jurisdictions in Canada? Oh, absolutely. It's already happening. As soon as the magpie gained the rights of nature, um, the people who had worked on it were getting calls from around the world uh, asking, how did you do this? We want to do this, you know? And when I was there, people were visiting from Germany saying, we want to do this. They were meeting with um, Matthew Bourdain and, uh, and Chief Pietichu. So many people from around the world have, have come to really study this case and, and understand it and try to put their own cases forward. But it's also been a super springboard for cases in Canada. There's at least five cases ready to go before the courts. Um, so this, is, this has been an inspiration and what the word is, but you know, when you see something has happened, so you know it's possible, um, it, it's really ignited a flame that this can happen for us too. And this is the start of something big. As Maud Barlow says, this is an idea that's, whose time has come. This is pretty exciting stuff. You, you, it, considering your career has spanned a few decades, this must count as some sort of a highlight for you? It really does. I'm really proud of this film. And I'm really so chafed to be a little part of this huge effort, particularly because I have been making films for so long, 35 years, and nature films for so long. And every year, the section of the nature film that deals with what humans have been doing to the environment or an animal, and it's never good, is getting bigger and bigger. So to make a film about a good news story of something that we are doing for the environment and for animals and for nature is just so heartening. I'm so happy at this point to have been able to make um, a film like this, as well, are we all. Uh, Susan, the, the message is powerful and the scenery, scenery at time is quite overwhelming, but all in all, it's a, an informative and, and entertaining overview of what has taken place. And I, I thank you for being with me today and sharing these thoughts. It's, it's just a, a marvelous undertaking. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our guest has been Susan Fleming. And Susan is co-producer, co-writer, and director of I Am the Magpie River. The program is narrated by Sarika Kalas Suzuki and will air on The Nature of Things on CBC and CBC Gem Thursday, February 1st. That'll be at 9 p.m. Be sure and watch it. It's a very powerful documentary.